And the sticks? Sticks, I'm using Vic Firth, Steve White signatures. Uh, Steve White was a, a teacher I had for a little while okay. uh, at a music college when I was studying. And he's, man, he's amazing. He's awesome. <laughs> but his, his sticks are really, really great. Because um, he's a rock drummer. He used to, he's played with, he used to play with uh, Paul Weller. Okay. And stuff like that. Um, and loads of sessions. Good friend of Craig Blundell as well. Okay. And, uh, yeah. We know him. Uh-huh. And uh, yeah, they're just they're just really well balanced. They're not too heavy. They're not too light. They're very. They're actually quite similar to George's George's signatures, George Carlos's okay. signatures, and Benny Greb's as well, and Derek Roddy. They've all got a reasonably similar kind of kind of stick, kind of what uh, the same weight, same same taper. Mm-hmm. The only thing that's a bit different are the the actual heads. Mm-hmm. Okay. As I, thought, I always think it's quite interesting that those four drummers with actually quite very well, very different styles are using a similar mm. similar thing. So it's a very versatile sort of stick. Mm-hmm. But yeah. it's it's great for metal. It's got uh, it's got like a, a tear duct, a tear duct, no, not tear, teardrop. Sorry, God, sorry, I'm very tired. Teardrop shaped. Uh, Head, which brings out a lot of low end, so you get a lot of low end out of the snare drum because of that. You get a lot of power on the right, mm-hmm. making it ideal for blast beats. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how much do you practice these days? Do you get much time to do that on the road, for example? On the road, I'll try for about an hour. Uh, During sound checks, I saw that today. Yeah, we. Well, I mean, that's that's more of a warm up. For, to, I need to warm up to do the sound check because we always sound check with. Okay. Yeah. We always sound check with you know songs, songs with blast beats, so I have to be I have to be ready for that. Uh, but I like to try and try and practice uh, as much as I can. I mean, I'm working quite a lot at the moment. I've got I've got two more or less two albums worth of material to sort out uh, during this tour, so I won't have a lot of time for actual practice. Uh, I generally t- I tend to do it more when I'm at home, off the road. Uh, I've got a routine that's about six hours a day if I can, uh, but that's uh, it's not always not always so easy at the moment. Mm-hmm. But I try. I've got it's, it's basically a nine, nine, nine to five with a with a few breaks if I can if I can find the time to do it. Yeah, so it's a day job. Yeah, <laughs> in a way. <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, that's kind of how I. Because my, my girlfriend works a nine to five, so it's just kind of well, I've got those hours to sort of, to get it to get it done. You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How did you arrive at the at the configuration of the setup that you have now? I mean, you've already mentioned the 14 on the left, but uh, the the symbol, you know, placement and stuff like that. Uh, it's just it's just been a just been a few years of trying some different things out. Like, uh, does it differ from project to project as well? Yes, yes, it does. I mean, for the for the other two projects that I'm working on right now, I mean, Divine Chaos is pretty much the same. Uh, for setup because the drawing's kind of similar, but for the other two projects that I'm working on at the moment, which would be one of them is a progressive rock band called Machine, which is signed to Inside Out Records, okay. and for another project coming up called The Oracles, which is uh, it's a, it, it was a one-man project, but now a few a few friends have stepped in and we're just we're trying to make it a a real a real album now. And for that, I'm planning to use one up and two down because I really like that. One bass drum and one rack tom, 10, 14, 16. I really love that. 
kind of configuration. I come up with a lot of ideas that I wouldn't otherwise come up with. I'm toying with the idea of maybe putting in an extra snare as well, but I have to get much better at playing the drums before I do that. <coughs> okay. Um, best moments so far in your career? Ooh, that would be Rock Al Parque, I think. We did a, we headlined a festival in Colombia a couple of years ago, and that was about 50,000 people. It was really, really nice. Really, really nice gig. Uh, walking out on stage was... It was uh, it was kind of it was just earth shattering. I guess I'd just never seen that kind of many people before. And it was it, we played great. We got it all down on film as well. So it was really really big mm -hmm. big thing for me. Okay. Um, the thing that young guys very often you know talk to us about the question that they ask is. How do you get yourself noticed? I mean, you can practice all you want and sit in your rehearsal. Yeah, space, it's, you know. it's, it's the age-old question. You know, there are so many ways to get yourself noticed. It can be difficult to decide which one. I mean, the, m the main thing is to, to practice, to, to go out to gigs and just hang out with people. Just go out and meet people. I think that's the, that's the only thing I can ever really recommend is, is go to gigs that you... You know, go to your favourite band's gigs, try and find like-minded people, hang out, jam. Do, do whatever, you know. I think if you're really genuine about that style of music and genuinely enthusiastic, people will notice and, uh, and things will happen. Mm -hmm. But it's, yeah, it's, it's, a hard, it's a hard thing to do. It's getting more and more difficult. You know, YouTube is very saturated. And I mean, I could go on YouTube and, and see about 20 amazing drummers. Exactly. Easy. Easy, yeah, fine. That no one's ever heard of before, you know, people. Mm. And uh, so it's really hard to to uh, to stand out, especially you know with that with that kind of talent pool now. So I think the best thing to do is just to go out and meet people in person. And okay. Just is luck really a uh, factor here? Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Totally. Um, uh, you have to be. I mean, you can make your own luck. You can do a lot of things to make yourself more lucky, like going out and just. Mm -hmm. And trying to meet people and, and just just persevering. I think that's the main thing. But luck, luck will just decide how long it takes, whether it takes that, the rest of your life or whether it takes you know ten minutes. Right. Okay. Thanks a lot for this. No Thank you for your time. <laughs>